in the spot this is the havana lounge podcast welcome back to another episode uh i think we're about man 40 shows deep or something like that so uh, i haven't been keeping track of the count but um i just want to say thank you to everybody that's been tapping in week in and week out i appreciate you thank you for those of you who have been buying the shirts and ordering the new glasses um and all that so you could drink your wine with us when we're on the air. Can y'all see that? Yes, indeed. So thanks, guys. We appreciate you. The uh, Cash App information is down below. Um, so go ahead and send your love gift, if you will. Um, yo, um, I'm jazzed up, man. I, I got my man Doodlebug of Diggable Planets in the place to be tonight. And um, so I know me and him, when we get together, we go case by case. And um, and it's and it's and it gets you know what I mean like you're sitting in on a friendly conversation with us. That's my man. That's my ace. Uh, I don't know if you ever had the chance to hear the record that we did together, the Mush, on my album. I believe it was called the Lost Decade. Um, good brother, good brother, very talented brother, um, Grammy award winning brother is in the place to be tonight, and I, I'm excited to talk to my man guys um welcome welcome motherfuckers yes indeed um i'd like to take the time to thank av chevy my sponsors in the antelope valley california if you're in the need of a fly silverado corvette uh traverse chevy traverse right what else they got equinox. the chevy equinox Chevy Silverado, all that. Uh, go see my man Justin up there. He'll take care of you. And b by the same token, if you're in the downtown area, hold on a minute. <clears throat> yeah, if you're in the downtown area, uh, make sure to check out Cilantro Lime Restaurant downtown LA. They got the tastiest food you ever want to try. They got the great inventions, yo. They have a lot of um, fly dishes, and they also have that fly Mellow Man Ace-inspired torta. It's got everything except elephant meat up in there, people, and it's delicious. Trust me when I tell you. If you're in the need for the fly billboards for your album, artwork, and all that, hit up my man Daily Ads, and you can find all of them on IG. True indeed, man. Mark, you ready, man? Ready to hit one out of the park? Yes, sir. Tow. Man, uh, welcome, man. Um, I know everybody by now you heard we lost Corey Seager. And uh, $325 million later, he landed in Texas where careers go to die. Yes, indeed. But he got all that loot. He got the bag. Shout out to him. And shout out most of all to my man, um, this man, CT3, Chris Taylor, for not selling out, staying home. He's like, I was never really looking for the big payout. I'm staying in Cali. And that, to me, is even more impressive than grabbing the bigger bag. When you don't sell out, I didn't sell out to the corporations a long time ago. And I always salute and appreciate people that don't sell out on their morals, on their values, and um, their belief system. So shout out to Chris Taylor. You have my full respect, my brother. True indeed. Guys, uh, if you're ready, I'm ready. I'm going to light up a cigar and whatnot. I'll get to my cigar reviews and 
or my wine reviews later on, or maybe I won't. I know my doctor wants me to just chill for a minute off of both, but man, I got shit to do. <laughs> no doubt. Everybody get in the chat room and drop your questions for my man Doodlebug as we go. All right, so um, I'm going to take a second uh, so that you can get your wine ready, get that blizzy rolled up, and uh, and get yourself situated. I'm Mellow Man H. We'll be right back in two minutes, two seconds with the man, the myth, the legend, Doodlebug of Diggable. Peace. What up, you crazy kids? As promised, the man, the myth, the legend, my brother, C Knowledge, aka Doodle Bug, aka my brother, is in the <laughs> place to be. Welcome to Grammy Award winning C Knowledge, Doodle Bug, in the place to be. What's good with you, young man? What's up, MMA? How you been, brother? Everything is good, man. We pushing through it all. You know how this thing is. Um, I know. It's been nuts. It's been nuts in the United States and all over the world, and I see no remedy yet. So my question to you, my first question to you is, are they going to give us another stimulus for this new variant? What's going on? <laughs> oh, man. Yo, so they should, but um, I don't even, I don't even qualify for that joy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, you do. I think you do. You're, you are a... a Oh, we got independent the contractor, I, right? I'd have to do it. I have to do it through the uh, PUA John, you know, the pandemic, uh, the pandemic special John or something like that. But I think that thing ran out. You know what I'm saying? I don't know, yeah. man. I don't know. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind it, but I'd rather be on the on the road though. I'd rather this this thing just like you know what I'm saying, even out. Everybody do what they got to do, and then we can get back in the road and have some live shows with real people. You know what I'm saying? That's true, what I'm waiting true. for. True. Yeah, this the whole thing is a mess. Um, that that leads me to this question. Remember, I mean, we're still not completely out of the woods on this thing. And uh, so we're going to go case by case here tonight. Doodle bug. When this whole thing started, and I hate, you know, to bring up old memories or whatever, but it is what it is. When the whole COVID thing started, what did you do to stay sane? Be like, did you jump in the lab, start tracking out all kinds of ideas now that you had more time to sit down? Because I know you stay active. Or did you raise some kids? I don't know. What did you do? Like, did you spend more time yeah, at home? Man, a little bit of all that. You know what I'm saying? I I mean, I, I had the homeschooling became like, I became like a teacher, like instantaneously. I got mad respect for teachers. You know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, the, the stuff they do, I, I only had two kids to deal with. 
they be having like 30 kids in one classroom, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, I got I got way more um closer with my family. The family, I mean, we got mad close, you know what I'm saying? I spent way more time with my, my kids because I wasn't able to tour, I was able to be home a lot more, you know what I'm saying? So the interaction with them was mad cool. And after about a month of that, I started getting bored a little bit. So I started I, I started reading books, I started digging into my kung fu flicks. I started, um, then finally, I just started, I started finding, as I'm doing all this digging, I'm started finding old projects that I had forgot about, you know what I'm saying? I started dusting them off. I had mad time now, so I started dusting them off. So I'm working on this project. I'm working on um, a comic book that I got called The Epic of the Heaven and Earth Association that I started years ago with my uh, my business partner, my lawyer, Thomas View. And um, during the pandemic, he and I got back together and started uh, putting the thing together a little bit more more seriously, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. also at the same time, I got a chance to record my latest project, The Caledophian, during that pandemic, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, you stay you stay active, man. You're a lot like me. We're a lot the same. Yeah, we don't yeah. like to sit down very long. Nah, nah. Like-minded individuals when they come to that, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I knew that when I first met you that time. We was in New York filming that video, you know what I'm saying? I was like, yeah, I loved your, I loved your whole, the way you put everything together, the way you produced that, John, you know what I'm saying? Had everybody on point. We was hitting mad locations in one night, you know what I'm saying? You, you That's made right. Me happen, man. That was in the winter time. At winter time too, man. In the that winter was crazy. Time. Yeah. yeah. That's dope, man. Um, I, I wanted to start this starting a little backwards because I know you work on a lot of projects and I want people to go out there and support and, and cop, get, look, Whatever it is that you're working on, um, let's tell me about the uh, about that new album that you did, the solo project. Where, where the Caledophian, um Yeah, the, tell us the, what that even means, because a lot <laughs> of people don't know you was in Philly, but now you live in Cali. Yeah, no doubt. So it's basically that's what it is. It's a it's a hybrid of my two new my two realities. You know what I'm saying? Um, by coastal from Philadelphia. Moved to, to uh, California uh, last four years, about a four years ago. And I, I'm loving it out here, you know what I'm saying? And eventually, I love it out here, but at the same time, I got to maintain my Philly roots, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. out of that, it, it was born the Caledophian, you know what I'm saying? I'm Caledophian, you know what I'm saying? I'm a little bit of both, you know what I mean? Being, being, being you from, uh, you know, spent a lot of time in Philly, did yeah. you ever run into Nicodemo Scarpo? And the... Uh, and the you know, and the mob guys out there, Phil Leonetti and them dudes. Yeah, a few times, a few times. Is that you know what right? I'm a few times, you know what I'm saying? Not, nothing serious, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But of course, in the music scene, it's, Philly's big, but it ain't that big, you know what I'm saying? You a music scene, a certain scene, you go and run into certain people, you know what I'm saying? Here and sure, there, you know? sure. I had a um, studio space in Sigma Sound Studios uh, with Joe Tarsia, Mike Tarsia. Um, I gotta say, uh, rest in peace to Mike Tarsia. He um he passed away a couple of days ago, but My those guys, no doubt. they were the founders of Sigma Sound Studios, which is the home of um that whole Philly sound. You know what I'm saying? Gamble and Huff, Stephanie Mills, all that. You know what I'm saying? All that came from out of there. You know what I'm saying? And now were these guys were they mob related? Uh, yeah, a little something, a little, a little something. Bit, yeah, a little, I mean, I mean, I mean it's no, it's no secret anymore. Stuff. You know, the Italianos from South Philly, so of course, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, somebody from the hood, you know what I mean? Real talk, real talk, yeah. 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 So I'm, I'm, a, a I'm big cats. on the whole, you know, Bonanno, Colombo, Gambino uh, thing. And, you know, I, I watched those older videos on, on YouTube about, you know, the indictments and the things that went down yeah. and how some people, some of them had their hand in on the music business. Oh, no doubt. You know, and had their, their their hand in there really tight at radio, down to the club, down to the promotions, down into the bookings of the yeah. artists and whatnot. And, uh, you know, I find it really interesting because when you get come into the music industry, I think it's important to know all these things, like to know where who you might run into and what's everybody's division of what you're going to run into. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Cause I mean, like you know, I mean, you from the streets too. I mean, us coming up, trying to make it. You know, what I'm saying you need investors to studio time, marketing, and things like that. It ain't like um, PNC Bank or Wells Fargo going to give us a loan. You know what I'm saying? In our earlier day, you know what I'm saying. So it's cats like that, the street cats that 
you know what I'm saying, that funded a lot of those projects. You know what I'm saying? Indeed. And, yeah, I mean, and those other guys are corporate gangsters, let's be honest. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Basically. They corporate gangsters. So who, who do you have on the album, see? I uh, got um, West Coast Way Peach Priestess, uh, my sister, Miss Lizzie Jeff. She's on there. My sister, Astamari, singing on a song with me. Um, got my, my oldest son, Crown, is on two joints with me. You know what I'm saying? I was that really right? proud of that. Yeah, really proud yeah, that's of that. Dope. Yeah, we yeah. just got finished um, producing a video for us. one of the songs we did called Like Father, Like Son. We're in production right now. We're editing all the uh, footage right now. Hopefully, I'll drop it at the top of the uh, year, 2022. You know what I'm saying? But I'm proud of having him on there. Um, I had some producers on there. Young boy out of um, Fresno named Most Beats produced a couple of joints for me. Um, my man, uh, Miko Music out of Germany produced a few joints for me. Uh, my man Nemzo out of New Jersey also did a few joints like the one I was just talking about, like Father Like Son one with my, my, my son Crown. He produced that joint. And um, yeah, that's that's basically you know what I'm saying. Also, my man Markitech from out of Delaware produced the joint called Cosmic Funk and You know what I mean? Okay. What's your favorite joint on the album, would you say? I mean, they're all our children, you know, when we, yeah, exactly. we record you these, know, you know how that goes, we record right? these records and these songs and yeah. How do you pick your perfect, you know, your favorite child? You just don't. But if you had to, yeah. like that one beat that really got got you wide open, which one was that? Uh, I had a few of my like, um, joint I did called Do the Knowledge. Uh, my man Miko Music, that joint, I, 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 I really fucks with the way that beat goes down. I like how it came out. You know what I'm saying? Um, the song I did with my son, Like Father, Like Son. Okay. Uh, that's another joint I'm, I'm really I'm really messing with. And um, this other joint called Cosmic Funk and Teleki that I was talking about, my man Markitech. I really like that a lot, too. I like the way it came out. You know what I mean? You got a lot of bugged out titles. Is that part of the name? <laughs> you little bug? I know, out? man. I'm a bugged out ass cat. You know what I'm saying? No doubt. Guys, go out and support the album, The Caledelphian. Caledelphian. Yeah, no doubt. True indeed, my man. See knowledge. AKA the Doodle Bug. Now, a lot of people don't know that people just know you as Doodle Bug, the MC. The C knowledge part come. Where did C knowledge come from? Man, that's come my, my time um growing up, you know what I'm saying? The 80s, being influenced by the brothers and sisters around my um by my hood and on my college campus in Brooklyn, Philly, um, members of the 5% nation of Islam, you know what I'm saying? Allah's 5% nation. Um, studying that uh philosophy of life you know what i'm saying I, I i came to a realization that i needed to um kind of put behind my my slave name and, and bring to light the name that um i gave myself you know what i'm saying uh, which was i see knowledge born a lot you know what i mean true indeed in in essence you see the knowledge that is there left for you, know, you yes? out, brought forth by the father a lot you know what i'm saying true indeed True indeed. That's dope, man. All right. So now you have a clear understanding on the man uh, and what he's up to right now. Guys, this is the Havana Lounge podcast. We got the Grammy Award winning C Knowledge, a.k.a. the Doodle Bug in the place to be. Guys, get your questions ready for the man. Drop them in the chat room as we proceed. C, man. Um, Yo, I need my El Cubano. You over there huffing and puffing and blowing the house I, down. I like it. I, I had an extra one for you if you uh, want to come in. Next time, next time, I'm, I'm going to be in studio with you, man. I'm, I'm coming down to L.A., man. We're gonna Absolutely. We, we got some noise to make in the lab, most definitely. Yeah, no doubt. Kazal uh, working. I know myself, my son Kazal is steady working on pieces for us. Yes, and, I need uh, that. So that's what that is. Yeah. So, uh. Talk to me, man. Um, what's what's been up right now? Um, aside from the album, y'all y'all been touring? Y'all been rocking a little bit? Yeah, yeah, we rocked a little bit. You know what I'm saying? We've been rocking a couple times this year. We, they um once they opened up some of the clubs, we was lucky enough to um be booked here and there. You know what I'm saying? Throughout the summer, and uh, right now we're on a little layaway for the holidays, but we're gonna start back up in January doing some East Coast joints. Good deal. Yeah, you guys always stay busy, man. I've been to a few of your shows on the left coast. Always a, a great affair. You guys always sell out the uh, the theaters real nice, man. Right. And the way y'all bring it is always spectacular, man. Straight up and down. 
Well, I'm a big you, fan of, of the whole get down, brother. Thank you you buddy. guys are deeper than most people know, you know what I'm saying? And the music speaks for itself. Um, with that said, um, let's let's take it back a little bit. Um, let's take it back. As a matter of fact, let's cut to a commercial real quick. I got some bills to All pay. Right. And when right, we come back, I want to get into the, the early foundations of Diggable and how that took place. And, and we'll talk about some of that classic material. All right, we going way back, way back, way back. Oh, indeed. Yes, sir. Guys, keep it locked right here. I'll be back in two and two as we pay these bills. Hold tight. Welcome back, party people in the place to be. My man, Doodlebug, is in the place to be with me. And it's a true honor and a blessing to have my man take some time out um, and be here with us. I hope you feel the same way. I'm your boy, Mellow Man Ace. Let's get right back into it. Doodlebug, I mean, talk to us about how, how the group Diggable Planets was formed. Was that your first crew? Around what year did you guys establish that? Yeah, I think that was about... Uh man, I would say about 1990, about 1990, I, I met up with Ishmael, you know what I'm saying? We were always at the same, I would always see him at the little college parties, you know what I'm saying? Up and down the East Coast, from New York to Philly to DC, you know what I'm saying? Um, He was at the University of Massachusetts balling, playing for the uh, basketball team at the time. I was at Howard University in Washington, DC, but we were both always at parties trying to do things. I was in a group at the time called the Dread Poor Society and he was developing this Digable Planets thing. And um, we met one time um, just on a date. I think it was like a, a date, like two, these two girls that we knew back in the day, they were friends. Um, we, we all went on this little date together. You know what I'm saying? And while we was there, he started telling me about this group he had called Digable Planets and this idea about these insects. And I was like, yeah, that's crazy. I, when he told me at first, I was like, it was bugging me out. But then as he got deeper into it, the ex explanation of what was it, what it was about, it was mad deep. And it was things that resonated with me, you know what I'm saying? I just didn't say them in the same language of how he spoke it, you know what I'm saying? But I felt it the same way, you know what I'm saying? I was taught the same type of revolutionary um, ideas and things like that, but in a different way. So it resonated with me. And I was like, that's cool. That's mad tight. I like that. And he was like, yo, I like what you're doing with the Dread Poor Society. Um, if you wouldn't mind, man, you know what I'm saying? Help me out with this, um, put this demo together for DPs. And I was like, word, I'm, I'm down. You know what I'm saying? Let's make music, you know what I'm saying? And then we started getting together at his grandma's house, come to find out his grandma lived like right around the corner from mine in a, uh, a section of Philadelphia called Germantown. And um, 
we would go back and forth to each other's grandmother's house, sit around, digging through crates, jumping in the car, going like sell, selling um, old records, pawning them to make money to, for gas, and, you know what I'm saying? Weed money and all that type of stuff, just clowning around. And um, also at the same time, I, I knew um, a, a young sister named uh, Marianne Vieira who lived in um, the DC, Maryland area. And she and I were mad cool, you know what I'm saying? Um, she was also real cool, good in the music. And she was still in DC. And at the time I was in Philly, she, she would like come up and visit me sometimes. And one of the times she visited, uh, Ishmael and I was sitting in my grandmother's house and we were working on music. And um, she just started out of nowhere, just started scribbling some notes. And we were like, yeah, what you doing over there? You know what I'm saying? We all being nosy, like, what you doing? She was mad shy about it. She didn't want to show us what she was doing. And eventually, we, we uh, co coerced her to, to show us what she was doing. And she was writing rhymes while we were so over there working on beats and listening to samples and stuff like that. She was writing rhymes to some of the stuff, you know what I'm saying? And we finally coerced her to, to show us it. And when she showed us, we were like, yo, this is ill. Like, say that, say it. And she said it, yeah, it was dope, you know what I'm saying? And she was, she was mad talented, you know what I'm saying? She was holding it in. And then Ishmael was like, yo, we need to have her in the group too. And he was like, you know what I'm saying? It would be dope to have all three of us in there. He was like, yeah, blah, 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 blah. And um, he was an intern at the time at a, a record label called Sleeping Bag Records. I remember Sleeping Bag. Yeah, yeah Sleeping Bag, you know what I mean? So through his connects with Sleeping Bag, he met a lot of different um, A&Rs and a lot of different people at record labels. And he met this one cat named Dennis Wheeler. May he rest in peace. He's not, he not with us anymore, but um, he was a and r at this fledgling label called um, Pendulum Records which was owned by my brother, Ruben Rodriguez. You know what I'm saying? May he rest in peace too. He just passed away about a month ago. Yeah, um, rest in peace to both, no doubt. Yeah, but um, Dennis Wheeler heard our demo and he loved it. You know what I'm saying? It was mad quirky and he loved that. He loved all of that. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people were like, weren't feeling it was too quirky for some people. You know what I'm saying? They were like, I don't know. I don't. But Dennis Wheeler, he felt it. You know what I'm saying? He called us in. Well, he actually called Ishmael and Ishmael went in, he was the point man. He talked to the, he talked to him. And at the at this time I was back in Philly, just hustling, doing what I had to do to maintain, you know what I'm saying? And, and Ladybug sure. was in DC. He called me up and said, yo, this guy named Dennis Wheeler is really feeling our demo. You know what I'm saying? He, he wants to talk to us. And um, I think this might be it. And I was like, word, and I called Ladybug. She was excited. She came up to Philly and then she, her and I jumped up on the R7 train, scepter train, and rode that to New Jersey, jumped on the New Jersey Transit, rode that to New York, met him up there, and we had a meeting with Ruben Rodriguez and all these other cats up in the label. Um, and they they interviewed us, talked to us, and then they just asked us to perform like just out of nowhere. And we, we rocked a little one or two songs in front of them and they they was feeling it. And they were like, yo, we want to sign y'all. And uh, that was that was kind of like in a nutshell, that was kind of like basically how, how it all worked out. You know what I mean? What year we talk about? 90, 91, 92? And that was like 91. That was 91. Yeah. Yeah. I met Ishmael about 90 and all this took place. I was putting all everything together about a year or so. And then he he and during that time he was shopping the deal. And then finally about 91. Uh, Dennis really came into the picture, you know what I'm saying, and assigned us to uh, <clears throat> Pendulum Records. Um, tell me this, Ladybug Mecca, beautiful woman, never met her. Um, is she half Latino and half Black? No, she's Brazilian. Brazilian. Yeah, she's yeah. Brazilian. Some say Brazil is a Latin country, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they speak Portuguese. Portuguese, yeah. Absolutely, yes, indeed. She's very nice on the mic been a fan forever um yeah. your man ish is untouchable um yeah. one of my favorite joints from him if you don't mind me just breaking away rumbling a little bit um <laughs> when he got with camp low and did your uh my yeah. swing that okay, that joint is classic i got yeah. mine and that's the thing uh, blase, blase, blase. who named bell ray yeah man yeah, I know and that the was video crazy. was crazy when they I robbing know. the banks with the whole mask thing I on i didn't i wasn't even ready for that i knew they did the song but i wasn't ready the video like i didn't even know he dipped off and did that joint on the low and then one day i was watching videos a video music box ralph mcdaniels and uh, all of a sudden that joint just came on and his he took the mask off and i was like oh <laughs> Like, that's my man. Dev. Yo, that there's there's two songs that I've actually, when I go to clubs or I go into the spot and there's the DJ, it's two songs 
that I've ever paid a DJ to play, right? <laughs> oh, One man. was Fall in Love by Slum Village. Oh, that's, a, that's worth it. That's worth it. Minute that's I come it. through the door, I go hit the DJ off with a $10 bill. The <laughs> other one, out of all the hip hop records in the world, that this one, this one, that one, all, everybody's made. And the, and the second one was my swing. I would go, yo, I got to have that. Here goes, come on, put it on. You know, um, you guys yeah. make dope records, man, whether as a crew or by yourselves. Um, but man, I'm rambling. I'm getting away. I'm turning into fanboy over here a little bit. <laughs> I'm getting, it's, it's, it's getting away from me, uh, bug. It's getting away from me, dog. No, it's never getting away from you, man. You mellow man ace, man. <laughs> Cypress Ave, man. Come on, man. True indeed. True indeed. Right, now, nah, but, um, this, this what, but this what happened when you were family, man. We know each other a little bit. You know what I'm saying? We just chilling. You know what I'm saying? It's all good. Nah, like I said, we're going case by case, man. And sometimes yeah, it yeah. goes that way. Uh, so so now you 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 guys get the deal. They have you perform in the office. They give you, they offer you the deal. And at this time, if I remember correctly, in 91, uh radio was switching its format. And it was starting to play more underground hip hop and turning underground hip hop pop in a, in a way or popular as they say, right? And in that came DOS effects, uh, Black Sheet, yourselves, Cypress Hill, yeah. uh, so many other dope groups. And I mean, EPMD was already eaten yeah, uh, at, that, at that point yeah. um, since the eighties, but you guys fell in that I mean gang star recipes guru yeah uh, there were so many fly groups coming out um so how how do you who who first of all who produced the rebirth of slick for y'all we did we, we we produced everything that was all in house we did everything I mean Ishmael produced the whole album you know what I'm saying and we me and me and Ladybug sprinkled our little you know what I'm saying our two cents in here and there but it was Ishmael's vision, you know what I'm saying? Man, that record was so dope. I remember it was everywhere. It was in the Kool-Aid when it and when it dropped, it was in everybody breakfast cereal. You know what I mean? <laughs> cool like that. Come on now. Um I, so I gotta now, give credit. I gotta give credit though to Mike Mangini and Shane Faber. They, you know what I'm saying? They worked on the Tribe Called Quest albums and they did a lot of Native Tongue projects. And um, when we were first coming out, we didn't really know much about outside of our little um, home studio. You know what I'm saying? We didn't really know about no major studio. So the, the, the label connected us with Mike Mangini and Shane Faber so that they could guide us in, you know what I'm saying? All the technical aspects of the engineering and all that, you know what I'm saying? And Shout out to them. The yeah. But we produced that, you know what I'm saying? That was all Ishmael and us, you know what I'm saying? That's dope, man. Self-produced, self-titled. Well, it wasn't a self-titled album, was it? No, 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 no. That, First, that, I was reaching a new reputation of time and space. That's right. That's right. Um, so now you're moving along, man. Um, things are happening. H how does it feel when you get the call? You're being nominated for a Grammy. Ooh. Yeah, man, that was crazy. That was crazy. That was like a validation of, of sorts. You know what I'm saying? I mean, on a different level, you know, on an industry level, you know what I'm saying? Um, the streets already validated us at that point. They was like, they showed us love. Like I didn't even realize it was going to be that kind of love. You know what I'm saying? But it was, they showed, they embraced us when they didn't have to, you know what I'm saying? Cause we was mad different, you know what I'm saying? But they embraced yeah. us you know what I mean? and that was peace. And then um, the Grammys came around and that was like a whole different type of um, uh, approval, you know what I'm saying? Uh, approval and, and it was, it felt real good. You know what I'm saying? Cause that's, when my, that's when that's when my mom was like, oh, okay, now oh, you're doing something. You know what I'm saying? Before that, I was making noise in the basement. You know what I'm saying? Right, <laughs> right. We got those Grammy nominations. I was like, oh, okay, all right. You got See, the Grammy? You have the Grammy there in that room there with you? Not in this room, but it's in the, it's down the hallway. You know what I mean? I want to <laughs> I, I want to see that, John. When we come back from break. Yeah, I'll bring it. I'll bring it out. I want to okay. see that Grammy kid. <laughs> True indeed. Now nah, flowers, man. Flowers up, man. True indeed. No doubt. No doubt, man. No okay, doubt. so you get the call. What do you do? You, did you run to the mall to buy some new kicks and be ready for the get down? I mean, what'd you do, V? For real? Like, nah. you're like, 
fuck you motherfuckers. Yeah, you know what I mean? Man, I was happy, man. I sat around, you know what I'm saying? We played a lot of Sega Genesis in my living room in Brooklyn with my homies, smoked L's, laughed and talked about it. And just couldn't, I just couldn't believe it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I was like, damn, that, it, was, it felt surreal. I, I didn't really believe it until you actually got there. You know what I'm saying? I was like, I kind of tried to play it as low key as I could until the actual night, you know what I'm saying? Because then I'll then it would be real, real, real. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Until you get something in your hands, you know what I'm saying? It, it ain't real, man. So you kept it on the humble. Kept it pretty humble. You know what I'm saying? I didn't really yeah, go out and buy it on the humble. I know you, I know your integrity, B. You don't you don't <laughs> want to lie like that. Uh, you've never been one to rub your success in nobody's face and stuff like that. So so tell me this. Um I wanted to ask you, um, who did you beat? Who did y'all beat that year in that category to get it? I mean, I'm just, I, it's just a question. It's it was a question. Place. It was your, your people. Cypress Hill was one of them. Um, Snoop and Dre was another. Um, who else was it? Oh, Naughty by Nature was in there too. I can't remember if the, I, I, those are the three I can remember. I can't remember anybody else, but those are the ones definitely. I remember that. Now, now we're talking about 92 ish in there, 93. When that yeah, was not. That was After 92. the record sold and caught traction yeah. and yeah, that was 93, 93, yeah, 93, yeah. 94. Yeah. yeah. There was a lot of uh heavy dope groups, man. I mean, like it was a lot it of was. originality was flying around the game at that time. Come on, man. Our guy Drez was a lyrical beast. A beast. Uh, you guys with that versatility of the jazz with the hip hop, Cypress with the gutter hip hop. Yeah. Um, you know, like they had like a East Coast, West Coast thing that you couldn't figure out. Yeah. Tribe. Yeah. Tribe was just tribe at all tribe times. You know? no and there was a lot of stiff competition. I mean, was, when you man. had, if you remember DOS effects, bump, stickity, bump, skiddly, bump, bump, Ooh, bump, come bump, on, bump, man. Bump. I thought yeah. for sure that record might have got it, was going to win it, was going to edge you guys out. Was that the same year? It was the same year. I don't know if they, I don't remember them being in um, the same category of us at Grammy. Okay. I, don't, okay. I don't remember. But they, they might have been, but I, like I said, I don't remember Naughty by Nature, Cypress Hill, and um, Dr. Dre and Snoop. Was they, that they for was uh, Naughty for, was that for Hip Hop Hooray? I, or OPP? I, I can't remember. I might have been okay. Hip Hop Hooray. I think it was Hip Hop Hooray. Okay, no doubt, no doubt. Well, congratulations on the Grammy Award, man. I always wanted to tell you that, brother. Um, Thank that's you, a man. big deal. There's yeah. only one higher echelon in that, and that's you know, a rock and roll hall of fame. After that, you know, yeah. Yeah. Um, and and that's that's a big deal. I I myself never got anything close to that. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, we banged on the door heavy though. We did bang on the door. Yeah, um, man, you, but you but you, what you did was you you broke down barriers. You know what I'm saying? You create. You know what I'm saying? You was a pioneer, man. You were a pioneer. That one, they can never they take that away from you, man. Never. Oh, thank yeah. you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, man. So now, you know, you get the Grammy. The world's your oyster. The tours are now presented, I'm assuming. You're doing Soul Train. You're doing this one. You're doing that one. <clears throat> what had to be one of your, your biggest shows that y'all did that, that just sticks with you in that real-time moment of that era of your career? And uh, touring with Sade, that was amazing. You know what I'm saying? We toured with James Brown in South America. Man, that was, and, oh, and um, Guru uh, Jasmine Taz was with us too. And I, that was crazy. I remember that being mad fun. And um, Absolutely. I remember uh, our performance on In Living Color was, was a memory that I'll never forget. Um, the time we was on David Letterman, Arsenio Hall, you know, man, all that. That's like, come on, that's classic stuff, man. I'm like, I can't believe that I'm actually was a part of that. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. That's awesome, man. Now, when you went, what's your favorite place to, to tour? Is it uh, is man. it the United States? Is it, you know, Amsterdam? Is it, you know, where, where's your favorite? It used to be like, in my early days, it used to be like Amsterdam and LA. You know what I'm saying? It was my two, one of my two favorites always to go to because I'm from Philly, going to LA, you know what I'm saying? The chronic, the palm trees, the women, the beaches, you know what I'm saying? It's the fly culture out there. You know what I'm saying? I loved it. I always loved it. I still love it to this day. I still love LA a lot. You know what I mean? Um, and Amsterdam, like in my early days, that was like, that was like, 
heaven to me. I'm a big weed smoker, so you know what I'm saying? So Amsterdam was like the capital, world capital for a weed smoker, you know, to me back in the day. It ain't so, not so much nowadays, you know what I'm saying? Because now it's everywhere. California is one of the top capitals for the chronic, you know what I'm saying? So I'm good now. But back in my early days, my young boy days, Amsterdam, like anytime we was doing a show in Amsterdam, I was hyped. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I stayed in those those I stayed in those bars. They had to hit me up like, yo, man, we where you at? Sound check. I'm like, oh all right, dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh my brother told me that same thing. Send dog, he always I know he home did. Brag. Man, <laughs> Amsterdam was the the bomb, you know what I mean? Man, do you know you can smoke weed right there? Shit, don't Yo, give for real. Fuck, because, you know I mean? because in Europe, because Europe, you would think though, but Europe is mad tight when it comes to that, man. You know what I'm saying? Like you go to mad places, and you, it's hard to get weed, or most of them cats is mixing their weed with cigarette, with tobacco, and all that stuff. Then you go to Amsterdam, it's just like, like the light just shines. It's like, damn, cannabis. Yo, it's crazy, man. Because most of them other little cities, you can't, it's hard to find weed, man. You go to Amsterdam, it's like, blah. Yeah, yeah, no, no doubt. I can, I can only imagine. I mean, I had by then I had to uh, stop smoking weed. Doctor's orders. Uh, I'll tell you about that off camera one day. It's a long story, but no, man, help, uh, help, that's help, that's help dope, first, man, man, to hear, man. Um, what about how did you how did you enjoy Australia and all that whole deal? Um, yeah, Australia, man. They showed us so much love, man. That was the first time we ever been there. Um. We had great promoters that, that took us down there. You know what I'm saying? They showed us mad love. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Always had great accommodations, um, great venues. The crowds was always was packed and the people were lively. I mean, they were singing the, the songs with us. You know what I'm saying? You know how it is. You know what I'm saying? When you go, you go away from home and like they treat you like Jay-Z. And then you come home and you be like, no, nobody. <laughs> they still in your car out front. I know exactly. Yeah, uh, yeah but that's yeah, like I, I remember, man. Mad I put it down, me. put it down all over the world, I, and I come home only to find out my 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 Mustang 5.0 had been stolen. You know what I mean? Oh, like, man, come on. They that's when I learned about the ugly side of society. Uh, yeah, uh, but you know, I'm like, really? That's what we're doing? That's what they doing. Man. I put the city on the map. <laughs> and that's what y'all doing in you know return. This what you this what you do, yeah. <laughs> man. Man. man, that was the ugly side of society. Like that. That like I, that. I didn't see that coming. You know, there there was no college course for what we do. Yeah. Uh, at least at our level, you know, you have yeah. Juilliard and all these other places where you have to really pay to get in and 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 learn about the arts. But for us, it was on the street corner training. Yep. You know, in the yeah. backyard, in the battleground, uh, yeah. whether you are a B-boy or an MC or a DJ, or even if you're battling somebody with the with the crayon, uh, with the Krylon. So, you know, what I mean, there, there was no no college course for this. And you had to learn on the field. Tell, as a matter of fact, how, how was that? Did y'all do a lot of battles coming up? I mean, in, personally. Like, yeah, the never, never, never as, as a group, no, but as, but personally, individually, you know what I'm saying? We all had our little, you know, moments. I mean, me growing up, coming up in Philly, I was in a lot of little cyphers, you know what I'm saying? Trying to do my solo before I even knew who Ishmael or Ladybug was, you know what I'm saying? And my you're, pursuit, you're coming up at the same time that the roots are coming up. Yeah, that's my homies. I mean, heck yeah, yeah, yeah that's my... I, that's South yeah. Philly too, right? Yeah, no doubt. Them, come on, The Last Emperor, um, Will Smith... All these cats, Cash Money, Jazzy Jeff, uh, EST and them, Hilltop Hustlers. I mean, it's a lot of cats. It was Nicholas one. Act <laughs> Nicholas one. Shit. You know what I'm saying? Yes. They was all doing their thing, man. Um, MC Breeze. You know what I'm saying? So, he's, and my he's OG, in LA and my now. OG, yeah, yeah, yeah. And my OG, of course, MC Schooly D. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 I watched him because he was one of, like you said, we didn't have no school for this. We had to learn from our OGs. On the, on the street training, you know what I'm saying? And he was one of them cats, like, I'm from Philly, so I watched him. He did everything himself, you know what I'm saying? He was self-produced. He put his own music out, you know what I'm saying? He distributed himself. He was, he was his own label, you know what I'm saying? That was powerful to see that as a young bull coming up, like, seeing somebody could actually do that, you know what I'm saying? And surpass. Yeah, shout out to him, absolutely. Yeah, no doubt, shout because, I mean, on the West Coast, we had, like, people like Too Short and other cats like that that was doing it, you know what I'm saying? On the East Coast, we had, like, Schooly D, you know what I'm saying? He was one of the pioneers of that type shit, you know what I mean? Yes, sir. So I watched him do it, and um, 
was very successful at it and inspired me a lot. You know what I'm saying? In terms of entrepreneurial type stuff. You know what I mean? And Absolutely. doing your own thing. Guys, you're locked in the Havana Lounge podcast. I almost forgot. I'm, I'm locked in with my man going case by case. Uh, you're locked in with my man Doodlebug of the Diggable Planets crew. I'm your man, Mellow Man Ace. This is the Havana Lounge podcast. Thank you for tuning in. We're going to go into one last break, pay these bills, and come right back. We're going to close it out with my man, so generous to give us of his time. I want to ask him about those records behind him. <clears throat> we'll be right back in two and two. Hold tight. Welcome back, party people in the place to be. We're back with my man, Doodlebug, in the place. Yeah. So um, tell me a little bit about that room you're sitting in. It looks real interesting. Is that the music room? Is that the yeah, man it's cave? My, my, it's my little, yeah, it's my man cave. You know what I'm saying? I chill out, watch my sixes, my eagles. You know what I'm saying? Roll some L's. Some, you know what I'm saying? My think tank. You know what I mean? That's what's up. Now, are those real vinyls back there? No doubt, fam. No diz out. Tell us a little bit about that. Is that Min, uh, is that Minnie Ripperton? Where? The well, one we behind got, you. This is Marvin Gaye, Trouble Man. Okay. Yeah. That, that's Sola, Un Moneco de Madera, Soul Children. Yeah, you know I'm saying I got a little bit of Sydney Portier over here. I got some uh, Etta James. I got some Etta James over here too. You know what I'm saying? Nice. Some Eddie James. I got some Diana Ross. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, so I can't forget, you know what I'm saying? Got Rick James, you know what I'm saying? Yes. You got some Earth, Wind, and Fire. Up oh, in you got room. to do that. And of course, I got my album, you know what I'm saying? My vinyl. Yes, sir. Pick that up, people. Hell Pick yeah. that up. That's dope, man. Hey, hey, welcome to the West Coast, bro. Yeah. Uh, I love I see it. You got the fly shades on, man. Um, whenever you're in town, come see, come see me, man, because we got the we got the best optometrist. Yeah, I seen you posting game. about that. I want to definitely got to hook up with him, man. Yeah, really. Dr. Lou is the best in town. He That's takes care of a lot of us, making sure stuff. that we that we're right with our eyewear. And That's he'll definitely stuff. take care of you, whether you need reading joints or you know, the fly uh situations just for the daytime you know what i mean like those that you got on um so definitely come see me you know what i mean so we can take you through there and i'm gonna come uh, see you either way brother you know i am yeah man. we gotta make some noise we, we gotta, yeah, make, we gotta some make some noise. noise we got things to do man we got things absolutely to do. absolutely guys if you haven't seen the song and video that we've did together myself and doodlebug check out on youtube 
Mellow yeah. Man Ace, The Mush, the M-U-S-H featuring Doodlebug. Uh, we shot that in New York. Uh, one of my favorite songs off my catalog, I'll tell you that, that's for sure. Love that um, so, Bug, man, the time has come. Show us the Grammy joint. We want to see that. Boom. I'm looking, I'm looking. Yes, sir. That thing is huge. Yeah, it's kind of heavy too. You bop somebody in the head with this. They not they not getting up. Real They're easy. not coming back, huh? <laughs> That's <laughs> right. It's the National it's Academy dumb. of Recording Artists and Sciences Diggable Planets. Best rap performance by a group or duo. 1993. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Rebirth of Slick. <laughs> Salute, salute. That's a big deal, people. My man is in the place. Bug, is there anything before we let let you go? Is there anything that you'd like to plug uh, where people can find you? Uh, where yeah. you're going to be out next? Of course, I got this 12-inch vinyl. I got CDs. I got vinyl, digital. You can check me out at cknowledgepresents.bandcamp.com. You know what I'm saying? Support independent artists. You know what I'm saying? Um, cknowledgepresents.bandcamp.com also my YouTube page uh, Doodlebug TV you know what I'm saying you can catch all my latest videos and all that also officialdiggableplanets.com is where you can find anything Diggable Planet related music, merch, vinyl um, our tour dates all that videos all that officialdiggableplanets.com you know what I'm saying check that out we'll be hitting the road in January Hopefully one of these days, um, be rocking with my man, Mellow Man Ace. I want we gotta do some shows together. We gotta get in the studio together, and we just gotta just. I just want to come to LA and just roll with you, man. I want to go to Cypress Ave. I want to go all the. I want to go play some golf with you. I want to do all that shit. Let's you go. know what I'm saying? Absolutely. You know the door. Go, to, right I, go to a Dodgers game. We gotta go to a Dodgers game. Oh son. yeah, we gotta do that. We definitely yeah. gotta do a Dodgers Phillies joint. Oh, that would be stupid. You know what I mean? That'd be stupid. Absolutely, bro. Yeah, let's do that. I'm with that. My man, I, I thank you for taking the time to be here with us tonight, man. man I appreciate you, you. I salute you. And man. I uplift you most definitely, man. What's thank that? you for blessing my show with your presence. Ah, uh, my brother, man. You know how we do, man. I love you like I love you like a motherfucker, man, for real. My dog, my dog. Love you right back. It's a few of us left, man. <laughs> we gotta continue to go we hard. No, we hold no, baby. I remember you inspired me, bro. Because remember one time we was talking on the phone a few years ago. I was like, man, I think I'm ready to put it down, man. Yeah, I remember that. And remember you were that. like, nah, nah. And look, and look, and look what yo, look at this revival you got. You got your wine. You got the music popping. You got that new joint that's hot with the uh, the chick. What's that? The young boy you doing the joint with? Yeah, the young chick. quicks cat. Yeah, young quicks. That's it. I messed his name up. Pardon me. You know what I'm saying, but yo, that nah. joint is fire. You know what I'm saying? Thank Look you, at man. Your you, you inspired a lot of that, bro. You told me not to not to uh, stop, man. And um, I appreciate you for that, bro. I uplift you to the utmost for that because you held likewise, me down. Brother. Likewise, brother. Likewise. Love you. you held man. me down. Kazal. Guys. Oh man, Kazal. Yeah, he said to tell you what's up, Kazal. That's my brother. My little, <laughs> my little nephew out this month. He said to tell you what's up. Uh, he's That's feeling a up. little under the weather, but we got a little small performance to do here tonight. That's what's I'll up. tell him. I'll tell him what you said. No doubt. Right. Um, if I'll you're good, you if huh? I'm gonna see you soon, man. For real. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, man. Um, and I need to come up that way anyway too. So whichever comes first, you All know, right. we'll get it done. I appreciate you, brother. Guys, you have been locked into the Havana Lounge podcast. I am Mellow Man Ace. That has been Doodle Bug. Peace. True indeed. And and guys, like I like to say, right around this time, in the words of the great. Curtis Mayfield, don't forget that your dream is your only scheme. So keep on pushing and move uh, on up. I'm Mellow Man Ace. I'm out of here for another week. Shouts out to my man, Doodle Bug. Yes, sir. Make some noise Salute. up in this week, man. True indeed. Salute. Right, Mellow Man Ace. I love you, brother. Love you too, my man. Peace.